Hey guys, welcome to my new podcast, Creating Art Out of Life, with me, Elena V. I'm a film director and dancer from the Philippines, and I've made this platform to celebrate life and art. I'll be having eye-opening, inspiring, and fun conversations about what artists go through in life and how we use it to create masterpieces. After all, love and pain is where art blooms most. If you're watching this on YouTube, please do subscribe. And if you're listening to this on Spotify, please do follow. You can also follow at e.v.world on Instagram for podcast clips and my own Instagram as well, at Elena Verata. Your support would mean the world to me. And now I'll leave you to it. I hope you enjoy this episode. Peace. This is high end. This is the most luxurious podcast that you can. Bartender Vince. Bro, if this isn't luxury and high end, we're rolling on the rolling on the main cam, rolling on the iPhone. All right, everybody. Before that, cheers. Okay. Just to start it off nicely. Salud. <laughs> Salud. All right. Everybody, welcome back to my podcast. Thank you guys again for the past, um, how many have we done? Three episodes. We're getting we're getting more traction. We're building it. And uh, I appreciate everybody that has been giving me some good feedback. But anyway, welcome back, guys. I'm so, so happy. She has, she came for me, even if her, she's super duper busy. She came here from Brazil. They just got back, her and Eduardo, and she's making time for me. So I'm just so happy. Um, my next guest is the coolest girl ever. <laughs> and for sure, the coolest beauty queen ever. From a life full of beauty pageants and competitions, her life now is full of absolute badassery. She's an amazing DJ, super hot model, TV host, fitness and adventure buff, and an entrepreneur. So happy to introduce my sister, Christy McGarry, the beautiful Christy McGarry. Thank you so much for being on my podcast. That's what you need the applause buzzer button. Yeah, yeah, I know. I'm gonna I'm gonna learn, guys. I'm gonna have some applause here. <laughs> some applause over there, please, for the two people that are here. <laughs> 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 she wow. just gave me some tips for being a, you know, she's she's a host, so I'm a little bit like, shit, I gotta make this good. But <laughs> she gave me some tips, so much appreciated. Um, actually, I met Christy, and it, it's actually a cute little love story. I I love her so much. When I met her, we met in El Nido, and she was on the DJ. I just had landed, and Christy was on the DJ booth. And then I heard... Mid-lockdown, by the way. Mid-lockdown. Yeah. She was on the DJ booth. I had just landed. They were like, oh, there's this party in... in uh, Panorama. Panorama. Good friends, Panorama. Letty and Peps. Go check it out, by the way. Amazing beachside bar and... You know, <laughs> it plug. is. True. It is. Amazing place. And then um, this cool girl was just like G DJing it off. And this song, I Feel Love, it was so clear to me. It's like, <laughs> I feel love, I feel love. I was like, fuck. She's so good. I went to you and I'm like, I love you. <laughs> and she was like, I follow you. <laughs> I did. Amazing dancer. Aww. Bad assery vibes <laughs> through and through. By the way, thanks for the introduction. That was, you know, that was heartfelt. Like, <laughs> of course. I do. I always tell her, actually, I'm such a fan all the time. I'm like her number one fan. I'm always like, we love you, Christy. I'm your fan. <laughs> Aww. Huge fan over here. See, she didn't, I followed her before she followed me. <laughs> I, I was uh, actually very shocked that you even followed me. I was like, what the fuck? This girl follows me? Why? Um, but yeah, yeah since then, ass. like, we just kind of just hit it off in El Nido. Like, we just immediately clicked. I could feel like our vibes were just so easy, um, especially that she's such an adventurous and, like, just loves the she just loves life and she just goes for it and i think that's just how i am as well and we just got super close in el nido and um from then on i just we've just been like in touch the rest is history the rest is history <laughs> but that's also how i actually got to know um her life before like she touched up on it because in el nido we were just having a lot of <laughs> really long deep conversations deep conversations insightful <laughs> <laughs> i mean that's me and like I started, we just started talking about her life back then. Just a touch up on it though. Like your beauty queen life. You were like, oh, I couldn't even cut my hair back then. Like we ha it had to just be long. Like, you know, you had to stay like at this length or you had to be this kind of body type all the time. So I did want to start off with really touching up on like your past. And like, you know, even though she's this badass like DJ, just the coolest girl ever. Like she had this life of really just 
beauty pageants and competitions. Like, um, did you start this like way before, like ever since? Well, it goes back to like when I was really young. I'll never forget uh, me and my mom and my sister. We would always watch the U- Miss Universe pageant when we were little girls. Yeah. And my mom, I don't want to say she was living vicariously through me, but she constantly um, input this, you know, this essence of Filipino beauty into our into our values and like how how proud we should be to be Filipina. I mean, pride is instilled in our culture so much, yeah. as you know, so. But we grew up watching these beauty pageants. And you, oh, she grew up in New Jersey, by the way. Yeah, by the yeah. way, I'm, I'm, a, yeah, I'm, I'm a dual citizen. I grew up in America. I was born and raised there. After watching Miss Philippines so much in Miss Universe, I grew up in an upbringing where my my mom always expected this of me because I grew up really tall yeah. and lanky. Yeah, she's really tall, guy. Really <laughs> tall. And um, it wasn't something that I appreciated growing up. I actually hated it. Really? Super. Did you feel like different? Like I was different. How tall were you when you were like in high school? I was already this height when I was like in oh, sorry Your height seventh is like, grade. What, seventh grade. Are you like five ten? I'm five ten and a half. Mm. So in seventh, seventh grade, I was already grade. like in seventh grade, I was already around five eight. Damn. <laughs> yeah, I was awkward. I was super awkward. Like all, I, I made friends with all the boys. I was super tomboy, and all the guys would make fun of me and say like. You know, they would call me Oak Tree. They would call oh me Bugs God. Bunny. But they were my bros, you know. Yeah. I was like, oh, whatever, man. Like, you know, like just brushing it off. And yeah. Like, You're never going to find a boyfriend. They were like, just to like, tease me because it was just me and one African-American boy. That were that tall? And we were the tallest people in the school. Taller than the <laughs> teachers. Oh, my God. Yeah, it was embarrassing. Like, Aww. you know, at the, at the time. It was yeah. just like one of those things like, so I never harnessed this kind of like beauty aspect. Yeah. And I... Even after seeing all these beautiful women on television, I'm just like, that can never be me. Like, yeah. You know, like, like I wish. You feel you like know? you weren't like super confident about. Like, Absolutely not. Yeah. No. But I mean, in high school, in high school, I'd like to say I graduated from an oak tree to a palm tree. An oak tree. <laughs> yeah. Because I started to like get into my own. Um, but I still grew up really alternative. I was always against the grain. Yeah. I don't like to follow norms. Mm-hmm. Um, not that that there's not anything against that. It's just like, uh, I was always searching for my own individuality as well. Always growing up, like I mentioned, kind of tall and awkward. Um, when I was in high school, I was like a, a scene kind of, not goth, but like I was a scene emo kid. You were emo kid? Super, <laughs> super. We gotta, t- we gotta bring that up. I'm just kidding. <laughs> but that's Pop where that I, up. I also, kidding. I also I learned my appreciation for live music in general. Like I was going to like rock shows and like, okay, let's sidetrack again into the pageant world. There's a big Filipino community in New Jersey and in the tri-state oh, yeah, area. Yeah. Huge, huge. They love to ballroom dance and line dance and they hold their own balls. Um, and it, it's beautiful that they uphold the culture because- yeah. Uh, I if, if the fact's not mistaken, I feel like the tri-state area has the second largest population outside of the Philippines. Oh, wow. Yeah, so I, I might be mistaken. Don't quote me if that's right or wrong. But regardless, there's a really strong banded um, community of Filipinos within New York. So in New York and New Jersey and tri-state, like this whole mm-hmm. little area. So they would get these balls together, hold fundraisers to support the Filipino community, and also hold or host their own pageants. Yeah. So my very first one was Miss Teen Philippines USA, where would they get Philip? They were, where they would get Filipino Americans or Philip, even full Filipinos, yeah. but that were growing up in the U.S. and compete in this pageant. And I was four, fourteen or fifteen. Damn. Yeah, girl. I was. And this was like the first like you entering the world of pageantry. Of pageantry? Yeah, kind of. And there, I already have my mama's let. You know, my that would do my mom's hair and makeup or like the industry is I mean, the community is small. You yeah. Know, it's small but it's big. Yeah. But like, you know, in the beauty scene, like, yeah. you know, that were really like pageant fan and obsessive, which as you know, Filipino fans are the best pageant fans in, on the planet. Yeah. You know? So how was that environment like as a young It was fun because I was I mean, I was meeting other girls that were kind of like like me, like yeah. Filipino Americans and also no offense, but their moms kind of just like pushing them into the situation yeah. and like what are we doing <laughs> what you guys but this is like i look pretty oh my god this is what makeup feels like that's cute like you know like it was like i'm so out of my element because i played varsity ball like i, I was i was all i did was want to play sports i was in yeah. volleyball basketball like that was like my 
my drive and my passion um having like an athletic or like a sports background yeah I feel like has taken me so far in my career in my life For like sure. learning these principles yeah I yeah. mean like you said like you know you're you're very adventurous you're very sporty was that like very unconventional for them to see and like were you able to at least like kind of showcase that in a way in, in these in these pageantries I think it has I think um for people who do know me and in, in the pageant circuit as well they do know me as a kind of like sporty athletic chick like that will never that will never be not a part of me yeah for sure but I'm also so grateful for what pageantry has taught me because There's this quote by Albert Camus, and he goes, Every act of rebellion expresses a nostalgia for innocence and an appeal to the essence of being. Ooh, that's deep. So I always will like to say that I live life a little bit on the edge. I um, like it, though. I think, like, when you're, you know, going against the grain and you're trying, like, a different kind of um, just route, that's when you discover so much more about the world, about yourself, uh, about life, you know, like... Um, I have just never done what everyone's doing. Like, I've just done what I want, you know? And, like, I feel like that's what you're doing also. And, like, um, it doesn't just make your soul feel good. I feel like people can see that you're growing as a person, too. There's so much out there, you know? There's so much in the world for you to learn. Um, and, yeah, I mean, like, that's that's so... I can see that completely in the way you live your life. Um, but when you were in that in that, you know, stage of your life, like... Um, when did you start getting, you know, more comfortable in your skin? Like, you know, I, I'm sure that your personality and the way you were living, I mean, like you were rebellious-ish in a sense. Um, when did you start kind of feeling like, all right, I'm trying to get more confident in who I am and my height and my, and my looks, you know? I do owe beauty pageantry a lot of, um, a lot of who I am today and molding who I am today. The, the people that influence me, my my mothers, my mamas, my my real birth mother as well, like all the mamas in my life, um, they really helped to support and uplift. Uh, the LGBTQIA community in general also was like a really big, you know, kind of... Um, Uplifted you. Totally. When, when, when I entered this realm of pageantry in the Philippines, when I got serious about it after mm -hmm. um, joining Bini Bini Filipinas, this sort of uplifting is a different type of level of bringing out your inner inner diva your inner you're confidence inner, you're inner you're diva inner, <laughs> you're inner, you know yeah so uh, I'm, i'm super grateful for it if i uh it wasn't if it weren't for the beauty pageant industry i don't think i would be as confident as i am today because it really it really taught me to one It's a lot harder than it looks, everyone. <laughs> oh no, I'm sure. I'm it, sure. Please explain the difficulties that you like. You know, as a because I feel like you know someone that watches it or someone that you know, if I were just a spectator watching, I wouldn't think how much work actually goes like behind like the walk or you know behind like the smiling. Like that shit is so tiring. Girl. Um, like please like do share like some of the things that people don't understand that you guys actually have to really put a lot of work and time into yeah i mean this is hours and hours of training um and even speaking like knowing how to speak 100 speaking but luckily i am pretty comfortable speaking yeah this is something that i guess some girls like need to work on i need to work on my my walk and my you know my femininity i need to learn how to like soften myself up and a walk was a big one for sure <laughs> And like learn how to do my own makeup because when you're when you're out on the road when you're doing the competition, um, you have to do your makeup on your own. Mm -hmm. So that was like another huge thing, which I'm super grateful for because I love makeup. So now now yeah. I love makeup. Back yeah. in the day, like my God, this generation's so different because when I was 16, girl, I was I was like just barely putting on eyeliner. Now everyone like 16 year olds how to do like full face. Glam. Girl, they're better than me. It's 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 a wild world, but it's a wild world. But thankfully, because of the pageant scene, um, I was able to hone into and kind of, oops, sorry. I was able to hone into and kind of like get a lot more in touch with my, you know, my feminine goddess. And hey. yeah, I'm super, I'm super appreciative of that. And, and that's also something that I really wanted to um, inspire girls that were like me mm -hmm. to do and to know that you can be a multiplayer 
in in whatever field you want to do as a woman like you can be you can hold off hold up the badassery you can be a feminine soft like goddess you can be a sexy beast you can do it all honestly you can do it all you can play any hat that you want to so i i, I just i just love being able to emote that and for sure no i think i think just being yourself at the end of the day like I feel like people and women that come into these pageants, like I feel like they're trying to uphold this kind of standard or or whatever everybody they think wants. And it's like what people want is you. Like they want to see line. you. Like mm -hmm. they don't want you to try to be somebody else. Like I think being yourself is the most, is the sexiest thing. And like that's what you're doing. That's what you've always done, I guess. Like, you know, being yourself and really holding up to to who you are. Um, so, uh, you know, moving on from, from that life, like, you know, something that we, we, we relate on a lot of things, adventure, we love our lifestyle and, and, and very, uh, I guess crazy things that we love to do. But another thing we love to do and listen to is our music. That's what we relate on. We actually share each other music. Um, I love her music days. She likes my music days. Great uh, taste. Great taste too. <laughs> <laughs> we always comment on each other's music. Uh, but that's something we also relate on. So I want to, I want to like move on to your music life. Um, before we get on to your career, what are you listening to now? What is your, Damn. what is your tunes now that you're enjoying? Ooh, now, what am I listening to now? What mm. you've been bumping to? You know what? Um, wh when you do DJ, it's an, it's an endless, tireless search of something new and inspiring. But at the same time, you kind of always go back to to home, to your basics, or to, to something that you like the most. Like What's home to you? Um, home to me is Radiohead. Hey! <laughs> like, but, uh, <laughs> in its right place. <laughs> Yesterday I woke up. So okay. Anyway. Um, I, I actually knew it was gonna be Radiohead. <laughs> yeah, it's my go-to. I've seen them live a couple times. They're just something. They're just shit. A, that's crazy. Yeah, they're just they're just a band that 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 touches the soul deep. Like at any moment and any time, if I feel any way, it's Radiohead. I can throw on Radiohead and it will it will solve my problems. So oh yeah, mine up. is mine when I when I'm in a mood. It's um it's either yeah Karma Police. Or everything in its right place. Solid. Yeah. The other oh, one is how to disappear completely. That's when you're just Oof. like, like the, like the song says. Yeah. How do I disappear completely? <laughs> Please. <laughs> but so how did you start, you know, bridging from the world of beauty pageants into being a DJ? Like, how did that happen? And like, when? How did you bridge from there? Like, it's, it's such an unconventional transition it is it's funny it's funny you say that because okay i i went to university and i lived in new york for for years like i feel like new york city is like a part of who i am and you can never take the city out of the girl mm -hmm. um i love the beach and i love the islands but it's still gonna it's just like a core like it's like a, a root of me you know yeah, what i mean for like, sure. jersey city too where i was born and raised but like i still see the new yorker in you yeah it's like they're very they're they're similar in a way like we're, we're right across the river from each other so like i would literally skip lunch in high school and go to new york city yeah then i studied in new york city and then i was living in brooklyn with like a few of my best friends and um i was in the nightlife scene like you know i was i, I also waitressed for a while while i was in new york so um you know to see where i came from to where i am now is such a funny it's, it's it's a beautiful transition. I'm so proud of. I am proud of like you know. You should be like the yeah the journey because life sure. is a journey, guys. Like for there's sure. no, um, it's never too late to do anything. Don't ever if you ever feel like you're in a and if you're in a spot where you don't feel like you know what you're doing, that's not a bad place to be. It's a it's a it's a chance for you to explore. It's a chance for you to to build more self awareness. So don't ever take anything in a bad way. How was the journey for you then? Um, it was awesome. Like I loved my 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 twenties were because I I my roommates were all a bunch of artists. Mm -hmm. So um, I was always delved into the art world, and it's always been a really strong part of who I am. Um, and that's why it's it's funny that you say like, where did you get from for where you are now from then to now? Yeah, it's like when I was growing up in New York, um, and we were going out, we were nightlife, we were in art, like you know, like. Um, 
a lot of my friends were DJs. So I was already highly influenced by music. It's something that felt helped me feel free. Yeah, and in New York, it's like music is a thing. Like, oh my gosh. I it's love like, the nightlife in New York. It's an epicenter for music as well. Yeah. Um, so you were always going to like all the music scenes out there? Absolutely. If there was a, a DJ that we liked, that we would always, you know, go to Webster Hall when it was still open or like, you know, go to all these like underground clubs and catch the the coolest DJs. A lot of my best friends were DJing at the time as well. So, you know, I was always influenced by music and it was something that like, you know, hit the soul in a way that it helped me express my own personal freedom. Yeah. And I feel like that's something that everyone should should harness. Like what's what's something that you feel passionate about or something that touches like, your soul like music is so universal like you can listen to a song in the radio and it makes you feel better so um you're and you too being a filmmaker you understand how how impactful music is to create it's, the ambiance it's probably like a hundred not a hundred uh, it's probably like visuals 70, are maybe <laughs> it's probably around like 70 70 60 percent of set the tone right? yeah i mean like it's huge for me like to to to, to kind of capture that feeling and emotion, music is so, so important for my work, for sure. Yeah, absolutely. As creatives in general, I think music plays a big part, whether it's fashion, film, or just like soul music in general. Like, you know, music, music's the answer. <laughs> so you were around like the music scene a lot. Your friends were, were, were spinning a lot. Like um, when you were around that, did you, how, when did, like, how did you start feeling like, oh, maybe I want to do that. Maybe I want to try that. I mean, it wasn't ever th same thing as beauty pageants. It wasn't something that like immediately came to mind. Like I could do that because yeah. I always thought it it took a lot of technical skill, which I mean, it does. Like it's it's something to learn. But honestly, if you hold rhythm, and um, and if you have good song selection, and which you do, <laughs> as as you do, so you could probably take it up if you wanted to, babe. But like honestly, after my fiance started it. Um, he started booking and playing a couple parties and then, um, we would literally, then he asked me to play a couple times. I started to learn with him and we would literally go to black market. You know where black market is. Yeah. Shout out to Anna and Mulan. I love you guys. They were our managers and they were like, you can come in before the, the club opens and practice. Cause that was the only way to do it. Cause yeah. coming from not knowing anything, like, you know, we don't have any, you know, like technical musical background. Yeah. Um, we didn't, we own three fifties at home, but they were crap. So if, if they're just like really, what? Three, I have no 350s, idea. Right? Yeah, they're, they're just like older, older equipment. Yeah. So we had to go there and practice and get used to it. So it was just like a, it was, a, it was very passion driven and I loved it. Cause it, like I said, music, something that was, had always driven me. Um, I had been to Burning Man for three years, so you that was had a oh yeah, damn girl, yeah, <laughs> that's an experience for yeah. three times. Yeah, it was I so for I, sure. Like that, that kind of showed you the power of music. It was a, a major factor and something that contributed to like me feeling like music was a, at a core of who I am. I already knew it, but like there, it's such a it's such an embodying experience and you're just like at the same frequency with so many people. Yeah. Um, I feel like you would love it. I know you I would. I know I would. And I, I, that's also why I also did Beanie Beanie because I'll never forget it. I felt like I was in a crossroads at one point where I did a couple of beauty pageants. I did move down in Filipinas and I had won that, but I still didn't feel like I, I belonged to that, that pageant circuit or... Um, yeah, I, you know, you, you go through this like kind of like, you know, te not teenage, but like you know, this angst. Yeah. Like, everyone goes through these crossroads and I'm sure as creatives, especially, you're going to find these kind of, you know, mini blocks where you're not sure what's next or where you should be going or where you should be headed or what you should do or how to get there. And then I just had this like uh, kind of deep, meaningful talk with the, the owner of my camp, Sam ben, ben Avram. Shout out to Sam and Mi Miasha. Um, and he was just like, you are destined for something really big, like bigger than what you think you are. Because at the time, maybe I didn't appreciate my self-worth and, you know, everyone goes through their own mental health issues for sure, and, for you know, sure. it, it's, it's super normal. So yeah. at the time I felt very lost, but, um, yeah, once he, once he mentioned that to me, I don't know the spark, you know, like ignited in my brain and then that within a couple months my mom 
it was her 50th birthday and I was like mom what do you want for your birthday anything and she's like a knock <laughs> a knock it's like all I want is for you to join Beanie Beanie Filipinas and I was like <laughs> okay <laughs> how old were you at this time I was 24 24 yeah so I was already or 20, 23 turning 24 and you hadn't moved yet to, to Philippines no no that that was the that was the, the following year was a year mm-hmm. like once she said that and I, I thought about how I might be able to impact girls like me and also to prove something to myself because I'm already very competitively driven. Yeah. And I was searching for something. And and she won't. Mama, mama's always right. She and won't. Yeah. yeah. So it worked, <laughs> it worked out really beautifully. And, um, and then, yeah. And then because of that exposure – um obviously I, w- I was doing the bini bini pilipilinas but it, like i loved what i was doing but i didn't want to deny the fact that i love music yeah and i love being creative yeah um so then segued into djing which was like a really it was a, it was a, it was a nice transition for me and i still like to uphold both of values and principles from yeah. both industries and worlds yeah and you kind of use like uh i guess the exposure you got from the from the competitions to, to say- build to build your I won't say it did it, it. It helped for sure, but but it did come with backlash. Not backlash, oh, yeah? but like um, we're friends with a lot of people in the music industry that take music very seriously. Yeah, rightfully so. Rightfully so. But that's not saying that we don't either. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, but of course, unfortunately, yeah. with um, appearance, face value, like y- you get you get a lot of. Uh, judgment you get a lot of judged book right by its cover we we we've been misjudged many times in, for sure in the dj industry just because i guess we're models you told me this though yeah i mean like it, it's something you have to deal with like oh just because they're hot and models like they can dj like it's very I'm paris sure. hilton you know yeah like, yeah I, I i will be guilty of that as well like not i mean i have judged paris hilton but i love you paris <laughs> you're a queen but i mean like judging her her skill set or like, you know, oh, she just getting this because yeah. I'm not saying that because the way we look didn't give us a slight advantage. But yeah. I love disproving the people out there and saying, oh, they actually play good music. Yeah. And you guys do. Yo, <laughs> they really bump. Like <laughs> I I love their stuff. I'm literally number one fan all the way all the way in the front when it's them. Yeah. She's they know how to make me Yeah, they know how to make me dance. <laughs> but I mean so um did, like what was your inspiration then to just like keep going like with this like despite having that backlash or having people like um think this of you uh, taking this route like proving people wrong is a is a great <laughs> incentive i love that feeling of being like that appreciation of people that are just like oh like you know like i, I love that like that slight bit of not love, but it just it just feeds a little bit of fuel. It's like if you're a competitive person, like when I was playing basketball, you know, I was going up. A, I was like a skinny flaca. No, flaca means skinny in Portuguese. Right? <laughs> I was like a skinny like twig, and I was like I was a scene kid too, right? So mind you, like sometimes I had like black eyeliner, and I had like my hair dyed blonde on the bottom, and they just like. And my 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 gauges in my ears. So yeah. I'd go into games and your gauges. I, yeah, like I'd go into games. Like, who is this like creepy <laughs> scene girl trying to play basketball? I mean, I think it's it's so satisfying to prove people wrong, especially when they don't think much of you. Oh, you're you're a model. You're 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 just you're just this face or whatever. Like when you show them actually that hey, I have skill. I actually, I actually like practice and really put some effort yeah, into this. I like, care. I care. you care about this art. I'm not just showing up like not to. Like, I care about it. I wouldn't be doing it just to do it. You know, what I mean? you know what I mean? Yeah, like, I, it's something that like. I, here's another thing that I want to touch base with, with people. Like, if you feel passion driven about anything, you should follow it. And it's not to say it could just be just one. Like, you're allowed to do whatever you want if your heart's telling you that you feel something for it, I feel like that should be your main incentive in life. Like to follow those personal passions and those goals. And especially as a creative, like it could be so, um, it could be hard, you know? Yeah. Like all my friends are artists and like, I love where they started yeah. and to see where they've come and how 
committed they are because they just love an, it as an artist yeah that's what you do yeah i think like something you create art you want to create art out of life hey Ooh, plug. <laughs> but i mean like i i think it's true like i think that art is a lot of it's it's therapy for me it saves me it saves my soul and i'm sure that that is the same for you guys like music saves your soul it's therapy and like i feel like whatever makes your soul happy whatever makes your heart happy is what you should be doing in life i have so many different hobbies so many different art forms and i think that like there are so many things i get from each of them that help me in my life and like it's exactly what you're saying like if 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 that's what makes you happy what's stopping you from doing it even if you're in the corporate world you can still do your art life like you can ha- you can live both lives like even if you need money get that money in your corporate world whatever get your you know get your soul money <laughs> like in the art world you, you can, know you can you can you can juggle it all you can you can do it all you can you can do philanthropy as well like you know you can that was another big thing that got me into beauty pageant like pageantry was like wanting to help people wanting yeah. to inspire people like that always felt rewarding to me yeah you know what i mean like um and it also segue to like doing you know my hosting jobs and then to beach like i mentioned like yeah like, you know nature is such a huge inspiration for me and like being able to support and like you know promote sustainability and like there's there's so many ways that you can spread your passions into inspiring other people yeah to do sure. to do good yeah you know or even if even if it's not good like um you know some of my artists like they ho- they they hone into like my I'm sorry some of my friends are artists who hone into like you know the darkness yeah which is you know there there's always different segments where you can have relatability to people yeah. i feel like that's why art's so important so cuz it, it's honesty it's like showing a bit of your own soul to people and i think what what is what feels great or what feels the best is when you're sharing it and like um you you've watched uh into the wild yeah happiness is best when shared i think that's what we feel when we share our art when we share like i mean this podcast too is what makes me happy because i just want to share i want i want to help people i want to inspire people and that's um what i feel like you and your music your philanthropy your your hosting like those are are ways for you to just share your soul to people your channels yeah for sure um and you know going back with you know the music your 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 career your music career um what was it was there any like inspiration like a uh, idol of yours that, that a dj that that really made you be like i want to do what you're doing <laughs> um you know what the first people that i met that it really inspired me there's uh they're, they're, her name is Blondish. They were a duo at first, and then later Viv, she she branched out to do her own thing. But like I saw her DJing at Tulum. It was at one of our friends' weddings, um, and she DJed the the after party of the wedding. And mm-hmm. I was just like, she's she's fucking dope. Or freaking sorry, I know you, you go ahead. The I'm gonna bleep it out. She's dope. She's pretty dope. And I I I saw the range of how her career progressed. And she's also someone that um, promotes sustainability. So she holds beach cleanups when, let's say she's doing a gig in Ibiza. Then she'll host a beach cleanup or promote, like, you know. So I, I really dug that she was able to, um, like, you know, input multiple facets of, like, how she wanted to inspire people. Yeah. With, with, by using her brand or her yeah. face. Which, by the way, social media is a whole nother, like, animal. Like, how can you do... How can you promote yourself, which is already so hard? It's yeah. crazy. It's not hard. It's not hard. It's just that it's not cringe, but it's like, how do you do it in a tasteful manner? Where it's not like that doesn't jeopardize your soul. Yeah. You know, because yeah. like I mentioned, all my friends back in New York, all my homies are all artists. So like back in the day when Instagram was like just starting out and before it was like a beauty queen and all this jazz, I was like, my Instagram was just like artsy posts landscapes like never saw my face yeah yeah yeah. (laughs) maybe if you scroll down by the billion (laughs) maybe you'll start to see like the progression and then yeah you're just sharing moments yeah it was very more art driven nature driven like things that inspired me yeah because i I always felt i always had a creative kind of spirit you know what i mean so like i took fine arts and that was my, my my minor like so it was like i 
going from like posting like landscapes and like art and then like constantly being my face yeah and representing brands you know it was it was a it's a wild transition it was a it was a self-conflicting transition yeah actually but um, i think it's like you have to just you have to accept that this is part of the world now um, and part of the the job that we have to do the as creatives, climate. yeah, the climate, like it's it is like it is what it is is what I tell myself. Like even if I don't want to do it, and I don't want to have to like constantly show my art, and like I ha- I have to like social media is a tool. So I think like the the thing about that is like okay, how can I just keep it as a tool and not let it consume me as a person? Right. Um. So that's where I'm at. But it's always a conflict because you can't help but but feel like sometimes your value or your worth is a little bit tied with how people see you it's hard it's hard it's a conflict it is it is especially being like a, a public figure like a beauty queen yeah. or someone like also you now you're like you know you're you're famous director i am not a famous director <laughs> amazing best upcoming director Aww. in the biz you already know i'm so Sweetest. proud of you but like you already know like how how do you juggle like you know maintaining your your soul your yeah. soul yeah um like art and consumerism is like and you know it's a you know it's a it's a it's a constant battle but i feel like it could still be done tastefully and it's still an amazing channel for you to promote whether it's international brands or local brands you know to uplift so um i think i think um it is always gonna just be a practice like how to just keep you know the things that you need to do for your work and your art and like know that that is not your reality like it it is uh, jazz was on on the previous episode she said virtual reality reality versus reality and like it's like knowing where you are at like keeping your virtual reality for what it is what you need to do but like knowing that you're taking care of your reality your real life and who you are as a person super and as long as you're not going completely against your own grain and you're still supporting brands or whatever say so that you appreciate and that you actually, you know, support yeah. or like that are part of your life. Like, ain't no shame, girl. Like, ain't no shame. For sure. Um, with your with when you're you know out for for your events and your and your uh, gigs, um, do you still get nervous? Always. Are you kidding me? I can have a, I can have a, a bar gig. <laughs> That costs like a fraction of what we would get paid for, you know, a, a corporate event mm-hmm. and still have the same jitters, like hosting especially too. They're all the oh, same. Oh, yeah? Like, oh. Do you think, like, which, which kind of gives you more more of the nerves? They're equal. They're equal. Actually, DJing, I feel a little bit more natural and in my element because I don't have to talk. Yeah. You just, like, perform in a way, like, it just sharing their music. And, yeah, like, like once... I get into the flow of after like the first track drops, then then it's just like that's just homeward bound. You know? Yeah, just, and I think it's also an exchange it too. Like the exchange with the with the with the crowd helps a lot, right? Oh my gosh! Yeah, with the cr- exchange with the crowd when you're DJing. Yeah, yeah. that's kind of easy. You get yeah. that kind of like give and take flow. You can you can crowd read a little bit more. Hosting is crowd reading too, but I'm not I'm not. Um, I'm not like a like like super experienced host. Yeah, so you still like feel live. like like I, live live. T- I mean, TV is different than like event hosting. You yeah, know I mean? like I have my share of event hosting, but I'm not like you know like at the caliber that like as some of my my friends like Tim and Mark and Joey, yeah. you know what I mean, have been doing it for years. Yeah, I look up to them greatly. Yeah, but it's just like that animal is like a whole nother for animal. sure. Okay, so she is um now the face of Beached <laughs> and Metro, right? Metro <laughs> yeah. Channel. Yeah, and uh, Beached is basically they literally be traveling everywhere, everything, everywhere, all at once. Um, she actually made time for for me. She just came from so many different islands that you've been traveling at. So this like whole new like when did you guys start again? Like when did you come on it's again? It's been two. I can't believe it's already been two years. It feel like it feels like it was just yesterday. But you know, time flies when you're having fun. And honestly, it's it's my dream job. And here's where it's, we're gonna come into a topic that you're gonna like. I feel like I manifested this opportunity because during pandemic. Or even prior to, Eduardo and I would always share 
you know, our dreams and aspirations with each other. As yeah. You, as, as you should do when you're, an, an, you know, an, an involved couple. And For you, sure. You know, want to uplift each other and your goals and your For aspirations. For sure, and help each other. Yeah, and like, what do you want most? Like, what's something that, in, you, you know, inspires you most? I was like, uh, aside from music that we're, we were already doing, you know, like, aside from that. Aside from reaching goals, like, oh, it's tour abroad and, you know, whatever. Um is was travel like it's something that connected us really deeply i'm a traveler you're a traveler it's it's something that we we harness inspiration from like constantly so i was like you know what to host a travel show would be pretty amazing that would be sick you spoke that into existence synchro destiny for sure well i think i think like when you it, manifestation is like also putting yourself in that opportunity and like putting yourself in the place of opportunity i mean and like i think it's just fits your personality so much though like i think it just it's so perfect for you i, I told you recently I, I messaged you i dm'd you when i saw your story i was like this is literally yeah this this mm-hmm. job is so perfect for you are you having like is, is it something that you feel like damn this is what i've always just been meant for like I just traveling and really just exploring and and appreciating the Philippines and all the islands around you know it's not just me traveling it's um it's inspiring and motivating people to appreciate Philippine tourism or like to take part in it because there's so many beautiful places in the Philippines and it's something I feel so passionate about because I moved from the states to be here yeah you know like yeah. I, I dropped my entire life yeah. And if I didn't feel so passionate about the Philippines and what it has for me or what, it, what you know, what nature, what, because nature is also at a really big core of like what inspires me. Oh, even, yeah. even, even in our music, you can hear a lot of our musics are very tropical based or very like, you know, culturally based. Yeah. Like that's, it's, it's kind of a derivative in our, our music taste. Yeah. Um, when we when we play like the beaches and stuff, because we just love being on the islands. I know, yeah, yeah. Like, that ocean. is your thing with when we're at when you spin at the beach. It's very yeah, it is yeah. very. I mean, Eduardo's from Brazil, and, yeah. Like, that's why we also really connected with Brazil. Is there a lot of like uh, uh, Brazilian style that comes off of like like your inspiration or your um, what's it uh, kind yeah. of genre? Yeah, the genre. Yeah, hundred percent. I want to. I want to say. If we're playing in a, a more tropical setting, I want to say at least 60, 70% is Brazilian. Yeah. Just because there's no like Filipino tropical kind of yeah. like, we don't, Philippines, not yet, someone do it, doesn't have that kind of like tropical dance music yeah, yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But in Brazil, it's like innate. It's like yeah. in their, it's in their bloods and their yeah. veins. So. But actually, even in Brazil, you, she was, you're very, very much like, surrounded by amazing nature right it's kind of like the philippines in a way it's amazing yeah so i feel like nature is a huge part of you as a person you as well yes we got a cave that's how we 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 colonized the cave together we got a cave next time we're gonna put some (laughs) we need to put some like label there we're gonna bring the flag (laughs) yeah but is that like for you as a as an artist as a creative does a lot of what you put out like a lot of it is like really getting the battery from nature I mean, if it's not where I input it into my, like, you know, my content or if it's not in my music, it's still the number one place where I get to recharge. Oh, yeah. And reset and get in- re-inspired. Like, if if I don't have a break, I love the city. I'm a New Yorker. But I'm not going to lie to you. I left New York for nature. You know? Yeah, actually, like, I can't imagine you, like, knowing how much you love the islands. I can't imagine you as a New Yorker, just a city girl. I I'm was. sure you, I'm, I'm sure that, <laughs> I'm sure you had to, like, leave a lot and just, like, enjoy, like, you know, just having, being around nature. Because New York's just full of, like, it's a concrete jungle. Oh, yeah, we got Central Park. <laughs> yeah, it's beautiful, too. Yeah, I mean. But not, there's no island there. <laughs> I mean, it ain't no, it ain't no El Nido. Yeah, for sure. It ain't no Shurigao. I love you, Shurigao. So do you feel like, you know, with, you know, being as a strong, empowered woman yourself, do you feel like there's a lot of like what you stand for in this kind of adventurous, thrill seeking lifestyle that you chose? I feel like that's very uncommon for, you know, the industry that you came from and the industry that even with music, even with with, you know, beauty pageants, like how you are, you're so thrill seeking, you're such a badass, like you feel like as as that kind of person you have a lot you want to stand for and like speak to um the women out there too 
One hundred percent. I I I feel like my position in like you know this this beauty queen industry especially like I I'm not your typical beauty queen. I've always most people have always said that. Yeah. But I I I've learned to own that and I'm proud of it because like I have my separate alter egos and I, I like I mentioned to you I think like women. Anyone in general, but women can have several facets facets to them. Yeah, that they can uphold and be really good and powerful and strong at in whichever industry or field that they partake. Like, and I hope that I can inspire people to be a little bit more adventure driven, be a little bit more spontaneous, live life a little bit more on the edge, because it just expands your horizons. It's just, you know, why wouldn't you want to gratify yourself with exponential knowledge it's it's just one of those you know like you know especially as a beauty queen you you need to be multicultural you need to you know you need to be understanding is the the number one word you need to be able to um to speak to everyone the universe yeah literally yeah or like you know the world or the earth or whatever you want to speak to and um, I think also like when you're adventurous and you go out there, you 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 feel you you experience culture and people. That's when you realize how much bigger the world is and how much bigger the thinking and is. How pretty small you are. Yeah, and, and like and it. minds and even like just mindset. Like um, some people are very very into their own heads. They don't realize that when you talk to another person in another country or, or people in an, in another country, like their, their mindset is completely different. The way they look at life, the way that people look at life is just so different everywhere. 100%. And when you tap into those things, your mindset becomes widened, you know, and you become a wiser person. You become a, a more empathetic, yeah, empathetic person. I think that's um, exactly what it does for anyone that travels or gets the gets the opportunity to really just be in different cultures i mean and traveling in general is just such a i think it's one of the biggest inspirations well not for everyone but for art like how else can you feel inspired if you're not gathering intel from things that you've never seen before you know i mean or or like you know just like different artists like you know or, or filmmakers that you know they come from different places and regions and like you know their cultures are different and you're just constantly pulling you know these little gems and from all around the world it's just like an endless like you know sea of, of possibilities that you, you just are waiting to open up yeah for sure um and in line with that like what do you feel empowers you most then what is like that thing that that keeps you going in this life and like makes you feel like, you know, I'm going to just keep doing me and being that strong woman for everybody? What empowers you most? Oh, that's so deep. This is such a <laughs> beauty queen question. Miss <laughs> Christy McGarry. <laughs> Man, aside from, I will say that. Shit, that is such a beauty queen. It was. Though. I was like, empower. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, aside from the inspiration that I've gathered from my amazing family of beautiful women that have like raised me and uplifted me and supported me all through this way, they've been the most empowering source for me by far. Um, aside from that, I want to say, I guess there's two things. The beauty of nature is something that I guess is constantly something that we can never attest, something that we, should, we can never defy. So that feeling in, from nature, I guess, empowers me a lot in certain ways, like that, that, that hits the soul in a different way. And um, I think just being able to harness and own your own inner goddess, feminine. Divine feminine. Divine feminine prowess and spirit and being able to kind of lock into that. Um, it's not an easy path. It's not something that happens instantaneously. It's definitely, a, um, for some it might be longer or shorter than others, but it's a path of self-discovery and self-awareness. I think you, you can achieve that through meditation and through um, some other wellness practices or just, you know, like I mentioned, trying to discover what your passion and your purpose is. 
um, I feel like that's empowering and being able to accept that you're not perfect is, is, is empowering. I love that. I love that. And a lot of what you said is definitely going to empower a lot of people. So thank you for that. And before we close off, I do have a segment where I do ask, um, where I am the viewer. I am the spectator and the, a fan of yours, which I am. Um, and I'm going to be asking you what I feel like, you know, people might ask you and people that admire you might ask you. So please do direct your answers to the camera. Okay, I'm going to take a drink. The main camera. Yes, take a drink. Let's both take a drink. Because I don't know what to expect. <laughs> don't worry. This is not this is not beauty queen questions. <laughs> Are you sure the last one got me? I was like, oh, damn. Do I have I a timer? Realize, is there a timer? I didn't realize that that Ten, was such a beauty nine, queen question. Eight. Ding, ding, ding. And I was like, oh, shh. What empowers when you When the most? bell rings, you're just like, oh, my God. So we're now on to that last segment where I will be asking questions where I feel like people, some of the audience, might want to know. So let me be the viewer. Let me be the spectator. And I want you to just direct your questions to the audience. Okay? okay. All right. Question number one. I feel like I'm too boyish and awkward to be a model. How do I use this to accentuate myself and differentiate myself? I think that you kind of touched up on that. But how would you kind of like, you know, talk to somebody that is still at that awkward phase? Okay, by the way, in the modeling industry, no one is perfect and people love you for your imperfections. So if you're really trying to chase the model goal, there are all types of models where you can be editorial, you can be, you know, commercial. But if you feel like you're awkward, you should hone into whatever your imperfections are because that's probably what makes you most beautiful. Hey, that's a beautiful answer. <laughs> 10 over 10. <laughs> ding, 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 ding. <laughs> All right. How do I feel more comfortable in front of the camera when I still don't feel confident with my body? I mean, you're you're constantly in bikinis. Like, how did you gain that confidence? Just um, Okay. I'm going to be honest with you. It's a lot of practice in front of the mirror or a camera and learning your angles. Instagram is not real. There's a bunch of TikToks and random videos on Instagram that prove it's all about angles, holding it in and sucking it in. Trust me, like my abs don't look like that 24 hours of the day. I'm not breathing for those photos. So if you want to practice, <laughs> practice it. If not, go to the gym. If you want to, you know, if you want to gain that kind of fitness body and you don't feel comfortable where you are now, um, it doesn't happen overnight. I go through waves. Um, no one's fitness journey is the same. Mine, and I'm sure as a lettuce, goes up and down. There are days that we don't feel as fit. There are days that we go consistently to the gym. But whatever it is, everyone has their own workout routines or as much time that they can spend in their day to commit to it. But in the end, if you do commit to it, I'm sure the results will be super beneficial and you'll love the way that you look. A ding, 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 ding. <laughs> All right. I still feel nervous and fuck up when I'm on the decks. How do I get past this, Miss Christy McGarry? Okay, that's probably something that will never go away. Um, as a DJ or even as an artist and a lot of people in the creative industry, you're always going to be a constant student. So be humbled by how nervous you feel. As that means that you're passionate about it. And um, after you land the first track, it's all coasting free from there. So. <laughs> ding 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 <laughs> <laughs> and lastly before we close up what would you like to say for all the young aspiring models DJs hosts out there what would you want to say to them that look up to you I want to say no matter what your background is or no matter where you came from that there are no adversities that can stop you from achieving whatever goals that you want um, especially here in the Philippines, there are so many hindrances uh, regarding, you know, class level or, or societal level or, you know, your skin tone, if you're morena, so power to the morenas. There's a place for you wherever you are. If you uphold your authentic authenticity and you keep going for and reaching for your goals, you can make it. Promise. Promise. Just hard work and perseverance. Hey, and the creating art out of life beauty pageant winner goes to Miss Christy McGarry. 
thank uh, you for sharing all of that. I think a lot of people are you. definitely going to learn. And, you know, just look up to, to how you are as a person. You're very, I mean, you took a lot of unconventional routes and you still killed it and you're living your life. And I think a lot of people can take a lot from that, um, especially young women out there. So thank you for that. I do have a little gift for you. Um, to show my appreciation. What's you said this? you like red wine. I've been giving wine. So I just oh, am I an alcoholic? I, I don't know. But I got you some wine oh, just yeah, as a I thank you. Wine. And before we close off, I do want to give you the floor. If you have anything you want to plug in or any anything that you would like to, to let the people know, please oh do. Gosh, how many plugs? Am I, how Go many plug it all. <laughs> um, thanks. Thank you guys for watching and supporting my girl Elena. She Lensky. She's the best. Best upcoming director in the biz. I promise you, Aww. huge things to come. She has so much creativity to share. Like. An amazing, beautiful, insightful mind way beyond her years. Is this a plug for me? Is it you? I have to tell my guests like it's not about me. <laughs> but I'm, thank you. I love you. Can't say I'm proud I, I am of her. But regardless, um, you know, thanks for watching. Uh, please follow me and my fiance. Do do. Uh, do do. Yeah, we, we play around the city. And country sometimes where you do music, uh, we love to DJ and like share music and, you know, our love for you guys. And I also host a show called Beached on Metro Channel. Tune in. We love to promote Philippine tourism and sustainability, which is really passionate to me. So um, and keep following Lensky's podcast. She's sharing such creative insight from some of the best in the biz and. I'm just honored to be part of the show. Absolutely. Of course I have to have you on. Like, I freaking love you. Um, but thank you again for being here, make, taking time to be with me. Even though you're super busy, you. I do really appreciate it. And thank you for love all you. the insights that you shared for Our everybody. Only day off. I was like, we got to do it. Yeah. I'm so special. <laughs> so special. So special. So special. Oh, hey. She's she going to break into dance now. Hey. So special. So go. Go. Special. Go. So special. So special. <laughs> but thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for being here. Um, Thank you guys for watching another episode. Um, you know, I'm racking out the guests. I'm racking out every every kind of woman and man that could I feel like could could give some insight and some wisdom. So uh, if you're on YouTube, please follow, subscribe. I mean, please subscribe and you know give me a thumbs up and I don't know notifications. I'm, I don't know Triple this shit that much yet. Up. Triple thumbs up. Give give me a comment. Why not? Um, if you're Say, on Spotify, Elena, you're amazing. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it wouldn't hurt. <laughs> and if you're on Spotify, please do follow it and, you know, rate me five stars if you like it. Come on. The next Jay Shetty in the building. <laughs> Yo, Jay Shetty. <laughs> Yo, Jay Shetty, if you watch it. No. Yo, shout out Jay Shetty if you, if, you, if you want me on. Come on. All right. So thank you guys so much for watching this episode and I'll see you on the next. Peace. We love y'all. Peace out. As always, thank you guys for watching this week's episode. To continue to support this project of mine, please do subscribe on YouTube and follow the podcast on Spotify. Thank you guys again, and I'll see you next Thursday.